Hey TRT fam, Justin again reporting from Middle Tennessee. That still hasn't changed. Today's installation is another one on thyroid hormones, but today I want to talk about the deiodinase enzymes. And these enzymes are responsible for the conversion of T4 into T3. I've had more and more people asking what occurs and how does the the conversion of the hormones what is the mechanism of action that so let's talk about it so there are three principal enzymes responsible for the conversion of the thyroid hormones and they primarily act on t4 converting to t3 or t4 converting to reverse t3 now these enzymes are called the deiodinase enzymes they're also sometimes referred to as selenoproteins um, or selenodeiodinases. They're called selenoproteins because, well, they're, they require selenium for part of their structure. Um, here, let's just, from here on out, let's just refer to them as the deiodinases or the selenoproteins. Again, that's all nomenclature. Interestingly enough, the thyroid gland actually has more selenium in it per gram of tissue than any other tissue in the human body. And as I've discussed in other videos, inadequate selenium levels can negatively affect Hashimoto's and it can even further exacerbate the thyroid peroxidase antibody load. But again, that's for another video beyond the scope of this. So here's some interesting knowledge about the type 2 deiodinase, aka D2 or type 2 selenoprotein. Again, whatever you want to call it. As I just mentioned, Type 2 has a larger role in converting T4 into T3. So here's a clinical pearl to remember. Type 2 activity is upregulated when the patient is hypothyroid or when the patient is iodine deficient. So let's say in the scenario that the patient is hypothyroid. The activity of T2 is upregulated in an effort to keep that conversion of T4 into T3 streamlining and moving adequately. It's, a, it's an effort to keep homeostasis maintained. Also, type 2 activity is upregulated when the patient is iodine deficient. Again, it's, it's just looking around, it's trying to find adequate enough iodine to main homeostasis so that the thyroid is chugging along nicely. Here's the problem. If you Per, if you introduce iodine when it's actively upregulated trying to get more iodine, you could transiently send that patient into a hyperthyroid state. Again, it's trying to upregulate iodine uptake in an effort to keep that conversion of T4 to T3 normal and moving along, but again, you could inadvertently provide too much iodine and go into a hyperthyroid state. So the introduction of iodine to patients who are hypothyroid is one that must be approached very cautiously and not given out like Halloween candy. And then there's the third deiodinase enzyme, and this one is D3, hence the third one. And this one's big responsibility and role is to catalyze the conversion of T4 into reverse T3. And reverse T3 is a stereoisomer of T3, and it really is just pretty much kind of biologically inert. It has a little bit of activity, some activity in the, the central nervous system, but for the most part, it's more of a marker of metabolic and or inflammatory health or health states of the patient than it is anything else. The biggest driver of D3 converting T4 and reverse T3 is hypoxia. So um, states in which oxygen deficiency occurs will be a big driver of that. Caloric restriction can also drive it up as well, and so can inflammatory states. Make sure to check out our merchandise shop in which I have different workout plans, especially made for beginners and more advanced lifters. So thank you for watching, give the video a thumbs up, and see you in the next one.